What's up, Beans, and welcome to Control Alt Fight, the perfect place to catch up on the whole week's news and the momentum leading up to EVO and EVO Japan is starting to feel super real, with Tekken 8 giving Paul the endgame Thor treatment, Guilty Gear Strive announcing its newest character is a possessed bed, a new in-game commentator voice being added to Street Fighter 6, a live-action TV conversion for popular manga Young Ladies Don't Play Fighting Games, rollback netcode coming to PS1 games, the Arc World Tour crowning not one but two champions for Strive and DNF Duel, and today's top story, an OS completely dedicated to fighting games? There's a lot to unpack there, but let's start with Paul Phoenix being revealed in a trailer for Tekken 8. His moves look awesome, and the new Tekken is definitely going to set a new standard for graphics in fighting games, but it looks like the once fit, Chad-like Paul of the past seven games has been given the dad bod treatment. Many will surely miss Paul's old Johnny Bravo haircut, but he still has death fist, and that's enough for me because it means I can use this special edition one button Paul controller. But why stop at pad controllers? If you need a one button controller and you prefer to play an arcade stick, you might want to check out this two player fight stick pack designed specifically for High Fight's popular game, Footsies. Christos has a blog post detailing the process of building the sticks, but whether there are plans to sell them or not remains to be seen. We also got two character trailers from Arc System Works at the end of Arc World Tour. After crowning the winners Goichi for DNF Duel and Mochi for Guilty Gear Strive, we got a look at gameplay for Spectre in DNF and Bedman in Strive. Spectre has 8-way movement mid-air, which should be exciting for players who found that DNF Duel didn't feel quite anime enough when it came out. It was announced that Spectre is the first of five DLC characters coming in the future, and also that DNF is getting some new system mechanics like the cube system, which activates your awakening effect at one of two different HP levels. There's one more system mechanic coming out, but we don't have details on that yet. For Guilty Gear Strive, we got a new stage called Fairy's Forest Factory and a character trailer for Birdman? It's a girl who doesn't appear to be doing any fighting herself and instead she just cowers in fear while the poltergeist here behind her wreaks havoc for her. In previous Guilty Gear games there was a character called Bedman who fights while asleep in bed but apparently he died and now we have an empty bed possessed by his spirit or something. I would look up more of the story but if you've ever spoken to anyone who knows about Guilty Gear lore then you already know that it's quite literally the fastest way to go to bed. Man. Now, believe it or not, the question mark at the end is officially part of the name. But that brings up a rather important question as posed here by Apology Man. If you don't add the question mark at the end, are you dead naming? Speaking of spectres, poltergeists, and dead names, here's a name you probably never expected to hear again. It's Mad Cats hosting a special event with their Gyogun team sponsored players, Machubo and Mizuha. The players did talk shows and presentations about being pro gamers, and from the looks of this photo, their talk about gear must have included a part about the new Mad Cats TE3. Before Mad Cats changed management, they made arcade sticks of a similar name, and the TE2 Plus is still one one of my favorite controllers ever. Will the TE3 be able to recapture some of the old Mad Cat's glory days? We shall see when the reviews start to come in. As you know, I do plenty of controller reviews, so be sure to let me know in the comments if you want me to check this one out. One controller I definitely have my eyes on is the recently announced Empress V2 by Paradise Arcade. Hopefully I get a chance to review this one too, so hit subscribe to make sure you don't miss it. I reviewed the original Empress a couple years ago, and since then the Empress has received PS5 upgrades, flashing lights, a special Evo edition model, and most recently, a flexible cable upgrade. This should help controller fans avoid having another anxiety attack about USB ports that are soldered to the PCB. Pre-sales begin this week, and I'm looking forward to seeing whether the Empress V2 will survive being rolled over by another Ford F-150. Enough about rolling over though, this week we got news that Roll Back is coming to PS1 games through the emulator known as Duck Station. This means games like Tekken, Bloody Roar, and Rival School will hopefully be playable online with Roll Back netcode. And if things go according to plan, you should be able to access it directly through Fight one of the most popular ways to play and find online matches for retro fighting game titles being run through emulation. And on the topic of retro fighting games, now it's time for OMG, a hit tweet. Everyone's favorite lab monster, performer of standing 720s, and supporter of Punch Planet, it's Automatic, celebrating the birth of their newborn baby. I don't know if he's had children before, but if this is your first child, then huge congratulations and welcome to the ever-growing FGC Dads Club. Just one more thing though, 
say goodbye to multiple consecutive hours for live streaming. This week, Capcom Spotlight showed us some new footage of Street Fighter VI and at the same time unveiled Hikaru Takahashi as the new commentator voice for the in-game commentary feature. As far as I can tell, Hikaru is known as a talent who does fashion, radio, and also has a YouTube channel called Takashi's Room. With Hikaru added to the cast, we now have eight different commentator voices, so even if you find the voice clips repetitive and annoying, with this many voices, it should be a very different experience to the incredibly limited built-in voice clips used in the fighting games from decades ago. But now it's time to talk about today's top story, the so-called FGC OS. Now the title is clever, but don't be fooled, this isn't actually an operating system that just runs fighting games. The OS in the name actually stands for Optimized System, and it's something that Arturo has been working on that will hopefully make running fighting game events on PC a much more viable future. When fighting games moved from CRT monitors and arcade hardware to LCD monitors and home consoles, a lot of speed was lost to input latency and display lag. By doing various tweaks like overclocking controllers and running monitors at high refresh rates, Arturo plans to release a form of patch that you can apply to your Windows PC and get yourself an optimized system. This will be great if you're too afraid to change all the necessary settings and make the tweaks yourself. Apparently selling a customized version of Windows with the tweaks already applied would also have been an option, but then you'd have to buy Windows again. And let's face it, we call it fighting game poverty for a reason. Anyway, the concept of a one-click install FGC OS could be game changing as we've already seen that Capcom is happy to run events like Capcom Cup entirely on PC. Not being forced to use consoles at events like locals and tournaments opens up a huge amount of possibilities, like being able to use PCs for low lag setups, high refresh monitors, easier game recording and streaming, wider controller compatibility, emulation for retro titles, and way more sponsorship potential from component makers. It'll be so much easier to attract sponsorship for things like graphics cards, cases, fans, RGB lighting, and well, the list goes on and on. And being a one-click solution is hopefully how FGC OS ends up, because any chance of error when setting up an optimized system could cause a lot of anxiety and mistrust of PC as a platform for events, and we don't want to be tied down to consoles for yet another eight years. In other news, Guilty Gear Strife has finally released on Xbox, crossplay has also begun, so whether you're on PC, PlayStation, or Xbox, you should, in theory, have access to a wider pool of players. Hitbox Arcade's popular Hitbox controller is no longer on pre-order, so if you order now, you should be able to get one delivered much sooner than before. Seimitsu unveiled a new arcade lever and they're calling it small form factor with a non-rotating shaft. I don't yet know exactly what's so small about it, but from the replies to this tweet, it seems that previous levers with non-rotating shafts, like the bullet, may have been too large to fit in some stick enclosures. Now, if you like fighting games and you read manga, then you'll surely have heard of Tai Ari Deshita, Young Ladies Don't Play Fighting Games. Dokomo's new streaming service, Lumino, announced that the popular manga series will be getting a live action TV drama conversion. In the fighting game scene, we sometimes get shows like High Score Girl, but this is the first I've heard of a whole TV drama being based on fighting games, so this is super freaking exciting. We might be getting more TV show type content soon, though, from this quick preview posted by Evo champion Xian, who is on the couch playing fighting games here with the legendary Mike Ross. Mike featured in the incredibly fun and entertaining series Excellent Adventures, and I'm sure the whole community is mega excited to see him chilling out with friends for more fighting game banter once again. Keep an eye on their YouTube channel versus Vortex. Pre-orders are now open for popular Arxis merchandise. If you've been waiting for Ramlethal's hat, Giovanna's dog, or the Totsugeki meme, now's your chance. Fans of Resistance 204X can rejoice as the second character, Slice, is now playable in the free open beta. If you haven't checked this game out, I'll link to the video I made below. Playing like something between Nidhogg and Street Fighter, Resistance 204X is a supremely enjoyable way to learn and teach the essential skills that you'll need in almost every fighting game. This week we also saw some awesome looking controllers. Here's your boy Johnny Fraze building a super nostalgia inducing Sailor Moon stick from the Toei Animation days. I watched some of the new Sailor Moon, but yeah, 90s Sailor Moon was so much better. Maki Suke in Japan posted this gorgeous pink and black button box featuring cutouts in the inlay beneath the plexi, which gives it a really three-dimensional look. No Perez posted this snack box micro called the Footsie, which appears to be a standard snack box in a 3D printed wide boy case. A smart alternative if you want the lap stability of a snack box micro Micro XL, but the ability to shrink it back to micro size when playing on your desk. And last but not least, turn up the Euro Dance and heel toe your way to victory with this hitbox controller based on the classic manga and anime, Initial D. If someone hooks up pedals to this thing and plays Gran Turismo with it, then we'll finally have come full circle from the day Initial T used the steering wheel to reach top 8 at a Guilty Gear tournament. Listen up guys, that's all for this week, but there's always so much more news than I expected, so it looks like Control-Alt-Fight will definitely continue into the future. Since the new M-Press is coming out, you might want to check
check out my review on version 1, which I'll put on screen right here so you can watch it next. Anyway, that's all the time I have for today. See you in the next episode of Control-Alt-Fight.